Welcome to MIST 2090. This video was created by Dr. Nick Barrente and Dr. Craig Piercy of the MIS department at the Terry College of Business for our MIST 2090 Day 1 Part A Introduction to Business Information Systems. It's created under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Shared Like License. In this video, we'll explore what is MIS. We'll understand careers in MIS. We'll look at the Terry MIS experience. And finally, we'll share a few notes about MIST 2090, the course. What is MIS? Okay, technically, it means Management Information Systems. But what is the subject matter of MIS? What do MIS people know and what do MIS people do? This is the primary topic of this course. Sometimes people have preconceived notions that an MIS person is the IT nerd in the basement who sits at his computer all day eating chips and soda, monitoring the enterprise IS and never coming up for air or meeting other people. Nothing could be farther from the truth. In reality, MIS people are decision makers who work at the intersection of business and technology. 99.99% of all change in contemporary organization is IT enabled. So MIS professionals consult with businesses to figure out how IT can support the information needs of an organization and provide business value. Think about how information systems and IT have changed the way we do business. For example, how do you sell to your customers? In the old days, before most of you were born, flowers were sold by florists who had single shops on the street corners of your hometown. The process was straightforward. The florists projected the flowers that they wanted to sell based on what was available. They took delivery once or twice a week, and customers came in the store or called and bought what was there. Now, just a few flower shops remain, but they must compete with grocery stores and online florists. They can also become a part of floral networks and deliver the flowers that are sold by others and can act as services to arrange grocery store flowers. Due to globalization, more varieties of fresh flowers are available. Grocery stores use sophisticated ERP systems to manage inventory, including flowers and production. Florist websites store order information in data warehouses and mine that data to spot trends and such. So several major trends have changed the way we sell to customers in all areas of retail. These are globalization, the use of information systems that capture, store, and help us process and understand data, known as ERP or supply chain management systems, and other systems that help us use data to make decisions, known as data warehouses, business intelligence systems, or data mining tools. Another aspect of a business is marketing to customers. In the old days, when car companies wanted to market their cars, they would take out ads in print or TV slash radio media. They could segment their market based on interest in the TV shows, radio programming, or print media targets. While this has not necessarily gone away, new forms of marketing are available. Now marketing campaigns are more successful when they bring together an ecosystem of media. Social networks link blogs to websites and channels, which are all integrated with search and previous browsing clicks with banner ads and promotions. Former web development organizations are becoming interactive media companies and eating the lunch from traditional marketing firms. CRM and point-of-sale recommendations can be used to help segment the market, target specific markets, look at niche markets or a long tail. They can help with extreme personalization and help with customer relationship management. Businesses also have to account for business transactions. In the old days, people would account for numbers using ledgers or paper spreadsheets or using flat files sometimes linked inside spreadsheet software such as Excel. The data entered into these spreadsheets would then have to be combined with other data from other departments and they would be reconciled in batch mode. People had to wait for data and was prone to error. It was time consuming and wasteful. 
Now, data is tightly integrated with processes in an organization. Through systems like Enterprise Resource Planning, or ERP, or BPM, Business Process Management systems. These systems come with different modules for each process. They help us work with data in real time. Data can be more easily integrated across an organization and between organizations. There's a single point of data capture. Data is linked to other business applications. Data can be displayed in a variety of ways, such as pivot tables and business intelligence tools. And we can work with data using server-side applications that help us easily collaborate with others on the same spreadsheet or document. Another important aspect of a business is to collaborate with business partners. Old modes of collaboration included synchronous modes such as face-to-face -face meetings or using the telephone, or as asynchronous modes using mail or what's known as snail mail today because how slow it is, or using fax or even email. Now, due to information systems and information technology, we have many more options available. Collaboration is mobile and ubiquitous. We have multiple modes of communication. We can use, for instance, Skype, instant messaging, voice, video, screen sharing, etc. Users can generate content for sharing over such tools such as YouTube, often used in businesses for training. And we have collaborative management systems. These can help us maintain communications and related documents and such, such tools as Google Docs or Microsoft's SharePoint would be good examples of collaborative management systems. MIS professionals are leaders in IT-enabled change. For the most part, they are consultants. They consult with other business professionals about how information systems and information technology can be used to provide business value in changing an organization. There are many paths to consulting in the IS field. IS consultants can come from a technical background, such as a software programmer, a database administrator, or a systems administrator. Alternatively, an IS consultant could come from a more business, non-technical background as a project manager or a business analyst. Typically, by the time one becomes an IS consultant, they need to have good foundational knowledge on both sides, while they may be experts from one side or the other. Consulting in the MIS career generally comes in two flavors, either external consultant, someone who works for a company that is hired by other companies to help them use IS to add business value, or internal, often known as an analyst, someone who would work within a particular company to deal with the internal workings of their systems. General characteristics of external consulting jobs include lots of travel, high pay, great experience. While an external consultant, you can earn credibility for your career and then either move up to partner level or leave with many offers. Internal consultants are also highly technical and have generally good pay, but they serve as business analysts to developers, database, process improvement, and similar other types of career fields. They have good pay, yet their work is more stable and there's less travel. Many of the companies listed here are those which hire MIS majors from the Terry College. Speaking of Terry College MIS majors, generally we're number one or two within the college for placement of our majors. We're typically, over the years, have been also number one or number two within the disciplines of the Terry College in starting salary. IS and IT jobs have been noted as being among the top jobs in the country. MIS is also proven to be a fairly recession resistant career path. Here are a few links that you can have a look at if you're interested in exploring an IS career or just want to understand how IS is used to support businesses.
What is the MIS experience here at the Terry College? Let's first think of two businesses. One, a more traditional business, been around many years, called Avon. Your mother or your grandmother may have been Avon representatives to sell Avon to their friends. Of course, a newer business known as Amazon.com, probably the largest and most successful internet-based retailer in the world. Let's look at how Amazon and Avon can be understood in terms of processes and data. Here is a typical Avon sales process. Notice we can separate the process into four steps. Salesperson will meet with the customer. In Avon's case, salesperson were often recruited from homemakers who would typically have parties in their home to share with their friends the Avon product line. A salesperson would then submit order to a system on account. After some period of time, the salesperson would receive the order, and then the salesperson would visit the customer to deliver the product that was ordered. Here's the Amazon sales process. We can see some similarities, but then there are some differences as well. In this case, a customer searches a website. The customer will then look at reviews and recommendations. The customer checks out with payment from a payment page that handles the transaction. And a customer will receive order from UPS. In our example, the processes have been simplified a little bit, but we can see some similarities and some differences. Think about it for a moment. What are some of those? The main differences in these two processes include who is responsible for each step of the process and how the important data is collected and stored. Here with Amazon, we see that every step, the salesperson is responsible for making sure each step happens. Avon, in effect, outsourced much of their sales and marketing to the homemakers. We can see here associated with each step the data that's collected by the salesperson or provided to the customer. Information systems have allowed Amazon to do similar things, such as retail sales, in a different manner. In this case, it's more customer focused. You can see each step, it's the customer who is primarily responsible for making sure that things happen. Amazon provides the platform. Similar data is collected at each site, but it's the customer who searches the website for the categories, brands, and prices. It's the customer who makes the decision and submits an order through the order page. And then the customer receives the order directly. The part that's outsourced here from Amazon is FedEx or UPS. An MIS professional would, would seek to understand the business process and what data is associated with each step in order to make the business process more productive, efficient, or effective, and somehow use information systems to add value to the company. In order to do that, information systems professionals start with modeling. Modeling allows us to describe systems in a way that can be more easily communicated, helps us to understand how various systems work, and then allows us to make changes to those systems in a way that wouldn't affect the current system, and then understand the effects of those changes. This is an example of what we call a process model. An MIS professional would learn how to create these and work with these to understand and improve the processes in a company. So IS professionals have to think a lot about how data will be stored. Here's an example of what is known as a data model. A model such as this is used to help organize data as it is stored in some organized fashion, such as something known as a relational database. This particular data model includes boxes which represent things called entities, anything we want to keep data about, and relationships between those entities drawn as lines between the boxes. It looks pretty complicated, but an information systems professional would take courses in order to understand the data and to model it in this way. Here at the Terry College, we have two foundational courses for our MIS majors, which fit precisely these two categories. We have our data management class, MIS T4610, where an MIS major would learn how to collect model and analyze data and store it in a database. 
And we have our Business Process Management class, MIST 5750, where we look at businesses as sets of processes and we understand how can we model those processes so that we may improve them and use particular tools such as BPM systems. We also have courses that provide MIS majors with both technical and the business side of MIS consulting. Business side of things, in addition to the core business courses that MIS majors take, they would take project management, MIST 5740, and systems analysis and design, MIST 4620. As we'll learn in this course, project management provides techniques, skills, and tools for managing complex projects. Systems Analysis and Design provides a framework for helping MIS professionals understand the requirements of a business and how those might be translated into the architecture of an information system. On the technical side of things, our majors also learn how to program computers and how to develop networked applications. MIS experience at Terry College also includes some electives. Some of our elective offerings show how dynamic our major can be. These electives include business intelligence, how can we understand and work with data to support business decision making, IS leadership, what things do people such as the CIO, Chief Information Officer, need to know in order to lead in an organization, an advanced business process management course, using IS to solve some of the problems of the world, such as our sustainable green IS course, and an information protection, government risk and security course. Here at the Terry College MIS department, we like to think that our MIS major can put you on a career path with endless opportunity. Let's talk now a little bit about the specific course, MIST 2090, Introduction to Business Information System. Our course is divided into two parts. In part A, the primary topic is everything business people need to know about what IS professionals do. Here we take a consulting perspective where we're talking about IT-enabled change. Part B provides a service to you to help you use one of the most important IS-related tools for business, spreadsheets specifically using Microsoft Excel. Part A will last from January 8th to February 26th, and your professor will be either Dr. Barente or Dr. Piercy, depending on which section you happen to be in. For Part B, your professor will be Dr. Aronson. Part B will pick up when Part A stops from February 28th until final exams. Keep in mind there will be a couple Part B sessions that you'll need to attend before February 28th, and those will be announced in the syllabus in class or on your ELC site. Speaking of the ELC course page, there you can find the syllabus. Dr. Barente and Dr. Piercy will cover the syllabus during the first day of class, and they'll go over such things as the course policies, course deliverables and grades, the schedule, and a note about academic honesty. Keep in mind it's your responsibility to read through the syllabus and the course schedule and understand these policies, what's required of you to receive decent grades in MIST 2090, what topics we'll cover and when will deliverables be due based on the schedule, and what's expected in terms of academic honesty. In this course, in order for you to understand what an IS professional does, we're going to look at techniques and tools that might lead us to understanding how we can build a mobile app. Specifically, we're going to ask you to start thinking about, quote, Save the World app. Any mobile app that can be used to support an activity providing some type of altruistic service to the world. Could be anything, but some examples include sustainability, tackling poverty and hunger, and reducing violence, etc. Some questions you're going to have to be thinking about as you think about this app, and that will be training you to think about them using tools of IS, include who would use this app, who would benefit and how, how would you make money off of this app, even if it might be for some nonprofit organization, they have to make money in order to sustain the organization. Can you make a business based on your app? These are questions we'll be exploring for the next couple of months. It's a glimpse of the world of an IS consultant.
This has been a Piercy production.